Euro 2024 is just five days away now, and I thought I'd make a video to update you on my latest draft. So before I actually get into the players, and I'm going to start with the goalkeepers and defenders, I thought I'd go through some data just first off. And this is the clean sheet odds for every team during the group stages, according to 11FI. I will leave a link to 11FI in the description. They're the best source of underlying data I've found for predicted clean sheet odds, goals, etc. We'll, we'll look at some predicted goals before I go into my midfielders and forwards. But for clean sheet odds first up, I just thought it'd be worth looking at some of the top teams, basically. I'd say by the looks of it, England, Belgium, Germany, Portugal, Spain, France. I'd say in most of their fixtures, particularly the top four teams there, Portugal, Germany, Belgium and England, they look quite likely to be able to keep a clean sheet in all of their group stage games. And then there are some other teams that peak at certain points of the group for clean sheet odds. So Italy, they've got Albania first up, 53% to keep a clean sheet in that one. Croatia match day two. 52%. You can see there Denmark, match day one, 44. Uh, Serbia, 41% in match day two. Checha, Switzerland, those two teams have got a good chance of clean sheet in match day two. And I'd also say Ukraine as well, 35, 36% in match day one or two could be considering them. Netherlands have a bit of a drop off, 39 to 13, match day one to two. Yeah, I'm not going to go through full detail of these clean sheet odds, but what I am going to do is pick a team, well, at least a set of defenders based upon them. So we'll go into those now. Okay, then. So my goalkeepers and defence at the moment, I've got Verbruggen in goal alongside Moldovan. Moldovan looks to be the first choice Romanian goalkeeper. There is Pence of Austria as well, who I believe will also be their first choice goalkeeper. Both of them coming in at 4 million. Unfortunately, the dream of having sells a 4 million Belgian goalkeeper is over. The Belgian national team manager said that Castiles is his number one. So unfortunately, I had sales before, had to get rid of him. Mittelstadt, DeMarco, Van Dijk, Valtfass and Cancelo. As we can see when we looked at the clean sheet odds, particularly with match day one in mind, I think these guys cover clean sheets quite nicely and most of them for a decent price as well. Mittelstadt, obviously Germany, the host team. We saw their clean sheet odds before. First choice left back, only 4 million. Pretty much everyone who knows about European football has got them in their team at the moment, I would say. DeMarco, particularly with match day one in mind against Albania, I think he's got a good chance of keeping a clean sheet and he's been fantastic for his club from an attacking perspective. And if Italy, I think they're likely to play a back five, he's going to play left wing back, basically left wing at the way he's been playing for his club. I think he could not only keep a clean sheet, but be good for attacking returns as well. Virgil van Dijk, a good fixture alongside for Bruggen for match day one. He's actually supposedly the designated penalty taker, according to Koeman, for the Netherlands. I really like him as an option. He's got a good chance of a clean sheet in match day one. And of course, he is a threat from set pieces as well and likely on penalties. Felt fast. I mean, Belgium, we saw their clean sheet odds throughout the tour. Well, at least the group stages, they look quite strong. He's only 4 million, played every single one of their qualifying games, all eight of their qualifiers. I think he's going to be nailed on to start throughout the tournament. Carries a bit of goal threat with him as well. Pretty decent from an attacking perspective. I quite like him. And my final player in the defence is Jao Cancelo. Now, I really like him. I think he's going to be absolutely fantastic. He's got a great attacking record for Portugal. We saw how good the Portuguese clean sheet odds are throughout the tournament. I have seen, though, a few Portuguese fans suggesting that he might not start. He's not been great for starts in these friendlies. Didn't start the last friendly that Portugal had. So there is a question mark as to whether he's going to play the first game of the tournament. So he's in my team at the moment, but I am eyeing up a couple of potential replacements. First replacement being Jonathan Tarr of Germany. Now, he should be starting at centre-back alongside Rudiger. Only 3% selected in the game. Although, amongst engaged managers, particularly the ones I've seen on Twitter and other people's drafts on YouTube, seems to be fairly popular. Obviously, went the domestic season with Leverkusen undefeated. So, that means, you know, they must have had a good defence to do that, right? Likely to start for Germany. They're the home team of the tournament. Scotland, Hungary, Switzerland in their group. Their favourites to win the group. We saw their clean sheet odds for each of those three fixtures. Germany are above 30% to keep a clean sheet, right? Obviously not as cheap as Middlestat, but 
you know, I've already got him. So it, I think it makes sense to do a German double up. And yeah, I really like him as an option. One other option I could go for is Mark Gahey. He looks to be first choice England centre back alongside John Stone. Same price as Tar, 4.5 million. I'm English, as you can probably tell. I am not confident in the England defence. I mean, I think they'll do just fine this tournament as a team, but I'm really not sure how many clean sheets they're going to keep. They look really suspect at the back against Iceland in a friendly, right? We, most English people would have seen that friendly, or at least the scoreline. See, I'm just not quite sure how good England are going to be defensively. Yes, the clean sheet odds suggest one thing, but that probably predicts Harry Maguire being in the starting lineup, right? Which we all know is not going to happen now. So for that reason, I think Jonathan Tarr is probably slightly better. If you just look back at the team, Cancelo's in there at six. If I go for Jonathan Tarr, that saves me 1.5 million. When we get through the rest of the team, I'll talk about where I might want to spend that extra 1.5. All right, then, before we get into the midfielders and forwards, I just wanted to look at the predicted goals. So this is 11 of 5's calculation for the likelihood of a player or how many goals they're expected to score during the group stages, basically. Mbappe, Kane, Ronaldo and Lukaku are the big four in this tournament, and I'd largely agree with that, right? Four of the best forwards in world football. Kylian Mbappe, arguably the best player in the world. I think France is still the best team in the tournament. But, you know, that's just my opinion. 2.46 goals he's expected to get during the group stages, right? Kane, he's on 2.29. Ronaldo, 2.06. And Lukaku, 1.75. Personally, I actually think Lukaku is slightly better than Ronaldo. So that's a kind of a clue as to who I've selected. But it's really important to bear this in mind because I think, particularly when picking your forwards anyway, Yes, there are some nice differentials you could go for, the likes of Dovbik, Morata, maybe Mitrovic, Havertz. Havertz could be a good option for captaincy, obviously, first up. You just can't look past these big hitters because their predicted goals are so high and I just think they're going to be so popular that if they perform, you don't have them and the player you've picked instead, also, if they don't perform, you're just going to lose the game straight away in my mind. So, yeah, just something to bear in mind. Other top players in the game, well, the best midfielder, according to the predicted goals, is Bruno Fernandes. He's got an absolutely unbelievable record for Portugal in international football. So he's right up there. We say Jude Bellingham, slightly below Bruno Fernandes, but he's the second top midfielder. What else we got there? I think Gakpo's class for forward, isn't he? Gundogan, 1.06 goals expected during the group stages. Phil Foden, Griezmann, De Bruyne. I think that probably covers us for midfielders. But yeah. I thought it'd be worth looking at the best players for predicted goals because that can kind of help shape who you pick in your team. So based on that then, here is my midfield. I've got Gundogan in there, Sabozlai, Rodri, Granit Xhaka and Bruno Fernandes. I think all of these guys you can pretty much guarantee are going to start for their teams. Minutes for some of them, probably a bit less than others. But to be honest, I suspect Sabozlai, Rodri, Xhaka and Bruno Fernandes are all 90-minute men for their nations, right? Gundogan, he probably won't play 90 minutes for Germany. He is likely to get an early sub but I still think 7 million likely playing as the number 10 interchanging with Kai Havertz he is their penalty taker or supposedly their penalty taker and I think when you compare him to someone like Verts, who's 7.5 million so 0.5 million more expensive and doesn't have penalties I just think you've got to go for Gundogan so Bozlai Hungarian country captain national team captain on penalties free kicks and corners their absolute talisman he's gonna play 90 minutes I think he's a really nice option. Rodri and Xhaka. One thing that, I don't know, you might not notice about this game is the sheer amount of points that you can collect for ball recoveries. And one thing I like about ball recoveries, having played other fantasy football games where you get points for tackles and recovering the ball, basically, is they're far more guaranteed in every game than attacking returns. So, you know, Rodri or Xhaka getting five or six recoveries a game, as long as they don't get injured or subbed off early, is pretty much guaranteed to happen, which is you know, potentially two to four points per game for the sheer amount of ball recoveries they get. During qualifying, I'm pretty sure both of those guys, Rodri and Xhaka, um, achieved seven ball recoveries per game. So there's real points potential that's pretty much guaranteed every game. I'd also say both of them are pretty decent for scoring from outside the box and so potential extra points for doing that as well. Rodri likely on penalties for Spain. Shakiri is kind of the main man for Switzerland when it comes to set pieces who... He's another good option. I just couldn't quite fit him into this team, but I definitely really like him. 
But I do feel like Xhaka could take the odd set piece off of Shakiri, so there's a potential of that. I just got a feeling he's going to have a good tournament. In fact, did a little piece on him. Yeah, I really like him. 4% selected. He should be on some of the set pieces. He's got a decent group, particularly for match day one and two. Get an extra point for balls. Well, goal score from outside the box. I think he's got a good chance of doing that. Absolutely nailed. Been unreal, as we know, for Leverkusen. Just got a feeling he's going to have a good tournament. And outside that, I've got Bruno Fernandes, who, well, according to the goal scoring odds, according to 11 of 5, he's likely to get the most goals of any midfielder in the fantasy football game during the group stage. So I think that says all you need to know. And it also bases the fact that he doesn't actually take penalties for Portugal. Obviously, Ronaldo is the first choice penalty taker. So yeah, he's done really well in qualifying already, to be fair. Bruno Fernandes scoring a goal. So qualifying, sorry, the friendlies. I think he's a really good option. One omission that probably you would expect to see in here is an England midfielder. Yes, I, I do want Jude Bellingham, but at 9.5 million, he's not quite as good as Bruno Fernandes, in my opinion, and more expensive. I just can't justify squeezing one of them in. The way I will do that, like I said, is if I potentially downgrade Jao Cancelo, I might be able to great upgrade someone like Sabozlai to someone like Foden or, or Saka. But that's all dependent on whether I go with Cancelo, I guess. Right now, I feel quite comfortable not owning an England midfielder. And one thing I would also say as an Englishman is I have no idea how England are going to line up. I do expect both of Bellingham and Foden to play, but exactly their positions I think is still unknown. And ultimately, their likelihood to get attacking returns right is going to be based on where Southgate puts them in the starting eleven. And with that being such an unknown probably stay away from them. Whereas you think those five players I picked, they're guaranteed to start and you kind of get an idea of where they're going to play already. So that's my midfield five as it stands. And then up front, I mean, every single team reveal video I've made has had the same front three. I cannot look past these three strikers, Lukaku, Kane and Mbappe. Ronaldo is definitely in there for consideration, but with Lukaku being a whole million cheaper than Ronaldo, I just don't think I can justify going for him. And I also think Lukaku's going to spend more time on the pitch than Ronaldo. I'm not saying that Ronaldo's not nailed on to start for Portugal or anything like that. But he's getting on a bit. And I do feel like he is going to... I just don't feel like he's going to have a very good tournament. And with Gonzalo Ramos waiting in the wings, you know, likes of Diogo Jota as well, he could play there. I just think he's not going to get 90 minutes in three games. Whereas Lukaku, he's as likely as any, right? And his goal-scoring form for Belgium is absolutely ridiculous. And he's on penalties as well. What more can you want? And then Kane and Mbappe, the two most likely players this tournament to score the most goals in the group stages. Can't look past those two. I guess really the only thing up for grabs is that third striker spot. But for me, Lukaku is pretty much locked in, barring any injuries. And obviously, Kane and Mbappe, I think they're shoe to pretty much everyone's team. One thing then that remains to be decided is my chip strategy. And I've got to say, I'm on the fence about a couple of different potential strategies I could go down. First one is a limitless in match day three and then using the wild card sometime in the knockouts. Thoughts behind the limitless in match day three is essentially teams will probably have progressed already or maybe even won their group after the first couple of fixtures and they're going to rotate their players. Some of those teams, you know, Germany, England, France, for example, I've got quite a lot of them in my team, Belgium as well, I've got quite a lot of them in my team, right? And come match day three, if they're already through and I expect their players to be rested, I'm not going to have enough transfers to get rid of all of them. So the limitless chip will help me through that. And then wild card, I think you've got to stay quite flexible about it with this strategy. Use it sometime during the knockouts, right? We all get an unlimited transfers during the, the, the round of 16, right? And then basically you're predicting players you think are going to score the most points, but also get the furthest in the tournament. And I do feel like there are going to be some upsets where you're going to need to use a lot of transfers to sell the players from teams you've expected to go far that got eliminated. And the wild card could help you do that. That's the most sensible and safest chip strategy I can think of. The next one probably carries a little bit more risk. So with this one, the thoughts behind the limitless are exactly the same. Use it in match day three to get rid of players that have been rotated because their team's already through. And then use the wild card in match day two because... There's quite a fixture swing for a fair few teams in match day two, namely Italy and Netherlands, who I've got a fair few players from in my team. I've got the Netherlands goalkeeper and Van Dijk and a less than ideal substitute goalkeeper alongside Verbruggen. So I might want to sell Verbruggen, potentially use the wildcard so I don't have to use a transfer for that. 
Then Italy with Albania match day one. They don't have such a good fixture in match day two either. So the likes of DeMarco, etc. could go. That doesn't leave me with a chip to deal with the knockout stages, which obviously means I could have players that are knocked out and might not even be able to field a full you know, 11 set of players if I don't take hits. So it does leave me open to a bit of risk. But I think a lot of the points and a lot of the goals are going to come in the group stages with more knockout games being a little bit more cagey. That tends to be how international tournaments unfold. So, yeah, slightly more risky chip strategy here, but I think it could pay off equally as the other one I spoke about. But I'm still to decide exactly which one I go for. All right, then. And that's the end of the video. Sort of talking through there my thoughts on my team chip strategy and potential players that could make way depending on how things play out in the remaining sort of five days we've got before the tournament. I'll admit I'm holding my hands up. This team is literally one or two players different from the one that I presented last time. But I think with more times gone on, we've learned more about these players. And to be honest, it's just further cemented their places in my team for me. Of course, apart from Cancelo. But what I didn't think about before necessarily was my chip strategy in complete detail. I've tried to do that here. So if you enjoyed the video and found it useful, please leave me a like rating. Let me know in the comments what you think of my team and my chip strategy. And if you think Cancelo is a good option or not. That's the one player I'm still to decide on. Subscribe to the Golden Goal channel. It should be just here on your screen to see more content from me. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.